So now we're going to use some exponential equations to solve some applications, uh, particularly in a compound interest situation. Now, uh, interest comes in a lot of different ways. Um, what we're going to talk about today are investments or loans that are single investments or single loans. Usually loans are single, but like an investment, you can put money in the bank every month and they will use formulas based on, you know, how much money you have in the bank at a given time. We're talking about a singular investment of one lump of cash and leaving it there for a fixed amount of time. All right, so here's our compound interest formula. Uh, it says A is equal to P times one plus R over N to the NT. This is what each of those values represents. A is the amount earned after so many years, or it could be the amount paid off on a specific loan. P is the amount invested or the amount of money taken out as a loan, called the present value. Uh, annual interest rate is R. It's in a percentage, typically. Number of times uh, compounded per year, if it's annually, it's once. If it's monthly, it's 12 times. Semi-annually, twice. Quarterly, four times, et cetera, et cetera. Daily, 365. Um, and then the number of years invested is pretty much a given. So let's do the first problem. Suppose you've got $10,000 to invest, and you're going to do that for 20 years. And your interest rate's 9%, so that's 1 plus 0 0.09 over. It's compounded daily, 365 times in a year. And we're doing that over 20 years. This is a straight plug and chug situation. So we're just going to plug that into your calculator and see what you get. Why don't you do this and make sure you get the same answer I and you should come out with about $60,483.05, right around there. Uh, so that's having that $10,000 to invest for 20 years, you make $40,000. Isn't too bad. All right. Uh, there's also a type of interest called continually compounded. So we talked about monthly, annual, quarterly, those are fixed amounts. Compounded continually is exactly what it says. Every millisecond of time over the period that you're taking the loan for. Now, um, doesn't make a lot of sense, I mean, in general, just because, well, if they're giving you interest continually, aren't you going to make oodles of money? Not necessarily. Here's where the root of this equation comes from. The equation is A equals P times E. E is that number we talked about earlier, that natural base to the RT. If you take this portion of the compound interest formula and you increase N infinitely, obviously this one over number gets smaller and smaller and smaller, and this multiplication number gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And it turns out as you look at the end behavior of this, it levels off. And what it levels off to is about 2.718, which is the E number. So this will only grow to a specific amount, all right? And if you look at this problem, you've got $5,000. You're going to invest for 10 years, and it's compounded continuously. So this is E to the 0.075 times 10 and again that's just a plug and chug problem and in the end we get about uh, 10,585 even ish so for 10 years you make about double so we want to know how much money we need to be invested in order to make $5,500 in five years in an account that pays 10% annually. So I need to make 5,500. I don't know how much I'm investing. Accounts paying 10%, so 0 0.105 over 
4 because it's compounded quarterly, and that's 4 times 5. So now we're going to take and solve for x just by dividing. And then we just, again, plug and chug into a calculator. And x will equal about 32.75 and 66 cents. So the next problem, let's say you want to double your money and you choose to invest in an account that compounds continually. So that's P to the RT at 7%. How long do you have to keep the money in your account? Now, in this case, this problem is a little bit different because you don't know how much you start with and you know you only finish, you finish with twice the amount. So we're going to put 2x here. And this is E.07 to the t power. Well, you'll note that the x's go away. And now we've got an issue. Because in this case, we know that we have an unknown power. The only way to solve this at this point is by using a calculator. So, And what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to go to y equals and plug the two sides of the equation into two y equals graphs. All right, One is going to be y equals 2 and then one is e to the 0.07x. And what's going to happen now is we'll take and let's graph this. Um, I know I really only want to see about 5 high, so I'm going to set up my window and go from 0 to 5, let's say. And, uh, or I'm sorry, I'm going to go to 0 to 5 for my Y's. And then my X's, let's go from 0 to, uh, I don't know, let's go to 15 maybe, something like that. All right, because I don't need to see negative numbers if I'm talking about years. And we'll go ahead and graph that. So there's my 2. And here is my exponential problem. You'll see it's starting to go up higher and higher. And where this intersects is where the graph of e to the 0.07t is equal to 2. So that will solve for x. So now I need to find the intersection of those two lines. And I go second, calculate intersect, hit 5, and you'll notice there's my blinker. I'm going to hit enter. It's going to switch to the second equation. I'm going to hit enter again. There's that crazy guess thing. I have no idea why they do it. I'm going to hit enter a third time, and t equals about 9.9 .9 years. And that's about all we have for today.